Warm greetings from Global Harmony House, a place where you can learn to reconnect to your inner peace and learn Raja Yoga meditation. Located on Middle Neck Road in Great Neck, we offer classes, discussion, and workshops in positive thinking, meditation, conversations for women, and various insightful presentations. Our main hall is open for quiet contemplation and festive events with the classroom used for smaller activities and conversations. The bookshop with books, music, and posters can support your meditation practice. We hope to see you soon at Global Harmony House where all programs and classes are without a fee. Have a peaceful day. Om Shanti. Hello, I'm Isabella Malfi here for Teen TV. And today we have Eric Lawson, a teacher at the Global Harmony House on Middle Neck Road in Great Neck, New York. Hello, Eric. Welcome to the show. Hello, Isabel. We're Thank so, you. We're so excited to have you here. I'm excited to be here. This is wonderful. Okay, so I, I have to start by asking what Brahma Kumaris is, because okay. I have no idea. All right. Um, Brahma Kumaris has a full name. It's actually Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual University. And uh, we're located in Great Neck, and we teach meditation. And so Brahma Kumaris, if you think of Brahma, it's a uh, father type, mm -hmm. and Kumari, you're a Kumari. It's a young woman. Oh, okay. And so it's the daughters of the father. And oh. what we do is uh, teach uh, meditation, kind of connect with how we think. And so it's um, about ourselves in the world. Mm -hmm. And we talk about trying to include our um, spiritual qualities, peace, love, happiness. And so the spiritual's in there. And we see ourselves as uh, all students learning. And so it's a university. So the Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual University is um, about young women who have grown and taught others how to think and be peaceful. So how did you get involved in this? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I'm not a Kumari. I'd be uh, an old Kumar. Oh. Um, but I heard someone speak and uh, liked what they said, liked how I felt when they were talking about that. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of investigated that um, about 30 years ago in Chicago. Wow. You've been doing it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it moved. So it's other places in the United States other than Great Neck? In Great Neck. Great Neck is um, what we would call our regional headquarters mm -hmm. and so there's um, uh, probably about 30 centers in the United States. We've got one in uh, Great Neck uh, started in Queens oh. and um, a place in Manhattan near the Empire State Building if uh, people want to go there and because a lot of people like to spend time uh, reflecting and be quiet um, an hour or two might not be enough and so we have a retreat center now up um, in Haynes Falls which is near Hunter Mountain. Oh. All right. and so it's uh, weekends. Um, it's much nicer up there in the uh, summer than the winter. I would assume. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're a skier. That's true. Um, so you mentioned that it's uh, a school and it's a learning experience for yeah. everyone. So would you consider it to be a, a belief system? Um, yes. Oh. Okay. We believe that we're peaceful. Oh. We believe that love is important. Mm -hmm. We believe that our natural state is joy. And so we believe that if we're not experiencing that, something has entered our thinking and we can change that. And so we learn to become aware of what we think and what we get from that or what we experience from that. And if it's not what we want, how to change that. So we're very active in that kind of silent space. Oh, um, so there's no um, person or thing or being that you worship. It's just the idea of... Yeah, there's, there's not a worship um, unless you want to create a temple in your mind oh. and then you can kind of get rid of the things that don't fit into the vision you have of yourself and how you feel and so you need to have an understanding of self and have a, a kind of a belief of self-respect that you're important in your own life and that the thoughts that you have um, affect that. So when when followers come and try and, and join the, the community do they come in 
already being at peace with themselves or is it the opposite? It's typically the opposite. Oh. Okay. okay. Um, a lot of people don't know Brahma Kumaris. Um, it's a, a, a word that doesn't flow off the tongue no, oftentimes. not in my vocabulary. And so it's like, well, what is that? And so a lot of times people come because they don't know where else to go. Really? Yeah, and so they're looking for um, a way to um, connect to the inner peace that they're looking for. We get a lot of people who are stressed. Uh, we get a lot of people who are looking for another way to live. Um, we get a, a variety of people from all traditions, all backgrounds, all um, economic levels, mm -hmm. um, because it's universal. And that's where the university comes in. Yeah. It's all of us, um, in our understanding and our practice, um, are looking for more peace, mm -hmm. more clarity, uh, that there's a sense that life can be different and how do I get so involved and caught up in things and how can I change that so that I'm more who I want to be. Are there um, meetings on every you know, Saturday or? Well, um, we have a, um, a few orbits of activities, okay. okay? There are some who come every day. And the um, Harmony House, our facility in, um, in Great Neck is open in the evenings, Monday through Friday, and we'll have people who come and just like the, the serene, quiet atmosphere mm -hmm. and find that that's beneficial. Um, there are some who come to our Thursday night lectures. We have an insight and we'll have meditation and then a little chat or a conversation, present something, and hoping that everybody who comes um, says, oh, that's interesting, and has something to think about for themselves, which will guide their mind into a place that might be where they want it to be. We have workshops on Saturdays. We have um, monthly activities. So there's a regular bunch of things yeah. that one can participate with. Definitely. Yeah. And the doors are, I mean, except for when the doors are yeah. closed. The but doors are, are always open unless they're closed. Right. That's right. Um, to anyone who... Anybody can come in. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Now, you, you keep mentioning meditation. Is there a specific kind of meditation? There is. Okay. There is um, a number. Um, you know, if you listen to the news or read stuff, they'll just kind of throw out meditation as, as one. But there's a variety of types. Um, and what we would offer and teach and kind of give guidance for is Raja Yoga meditation. And a simple explanation of that is um, yoga, yoke, union, anything that you think about you connect with. So we're in a, having a conversation now and you right. might be thinking about how wonderful your dinner's gonna be. <laughs> Maybe the pizza you're gonna have <laughs> later. <laughs> and so if you think about pizza, you can bring in the qualities, the richness of that. And your mind goes there and you're connecting, you're linking. It's almost as if your mind sends out a wire or mm -hmm. something, probably wireless now, um, and you pull into that qualities, okay? Mm -hmm. And so the yoga is that understanding that if I think of something, I'm going to bring that into myself. Okay. So if I think of something sad or sorrow, I'm going to experience that. And if you don't want to be sad or sorrowful or something, then you need to learn to change that. Not deny it, but to move on to another place. So for someone who, who is consistently, for example, sure. I am a junior in high school. Congratulations. Yeah, right. And um, so this is a stressful year. Okay. And I find a lot, I find myself in yeah. times very stressed out. And okay. And almost all the time, either schoolwork or auditions, anything that has to do with my future is on my mind consistently. Okay. Um, and so I guess if I were to use that type of meditation, I'd yeah. persistently connected? And yeah. you could be connected and you'd have a different experience um, depending on how you see yourself. Okay. okay. Because right now, if I've heard you correctly, you're thinking that you're working to become something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, see if you can start with the success in your mind. I have accomplished this. You will grow up. Okay? Mm -hmm. You will be something. <laughs> you will be happy. You will be competent. You will have a, a sense of uh, pride about yourself. So go into your studies now knowing that you will be successful and that this is the process that's going to take me there. And you will have a different feel. Your mind will be more focused and clear on what you're doing because it's not worried about going wrong. It's about finishing this, this off because you're going to be right. Okay. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. It's, it's something to look forward to. Another way of looking at it might be um, uh, athletes. Uh, sometimes if you ever see them, um, basketball at a free throw um, or a golfer, um, what they're actually doing is seeing themselves in the action that they want 
And then when they perform that action, they're kind of just following what is successful in their mind. Right. Okay, rather than what am I going to do, it's like, oh, this is how I see it. And so then they kind of align that. And so for yourself, if you wanted to see yourself, I know I've studied, I know I have these things, I don't have to worry, I just have to do the work, but I can do it peacefully, lovingly, joyfully, uh, competently. And then that brings in another quality, and then your energy isn't kind of dissipated right. by all that fear and worry. I really, I really like that. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be fine. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> um, so we, the, one of the first things you mentioned was that the leaders of this are women. And okay. I am a young woman, and yes, that you are. means a lot to me. So <laughs> what are these, these women like? Um, they're feminine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the history is that um, in uh, undivided India, and you can check out what that means, okay. um, before it was partitioned in Pakistan, there was a group of people and they had some profound experiences. And when you start to have these experiences, people show up and they want to learn more and all of a sudden you've got to deal with a group of people. And so there were 200, 300, 400, and how do we organize? Where are they going to sit? How are we going to feed? Those mm -hmm. types of things. Um, and there were a number of young women, not much older than yourself, actually, who were put in charge of organizing that. And they became the um, kind of the international leaders. One just celebrated her 100th birthday oh my last year. Yeah. yeah. And so she has great experience and a, a very powerful mind to hold on to how she wants to be, no matter what's the external would be, um, because um, the women offer qualities that are necessary in the world at this time from our point of view. Um, <laughs> men are great, I happen to be one, um, <laughs> but there's kind of an individualistic, there's kind of a separation, there's kind of a competitiveness that is um, uh, in their habits, right. um, but what is necessary in the world is cooperation, nurturing, patience, understanding, that kind of quality to bring people together. And that is uh, inherently feminine and in women, and so those qualities are part of the organization. So a woman that just walks into, into the, the house, do they immediately become one of these leaders, or does it take years? Is there a... Um, it would, you wouldn't, you're not going to be in charge okay. tomorrow, so don't worry about okay. that. Here she is. <laughs> 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 wouldn't be that way. Um, but it's a very interesting process because it's not a membership. Okay. And anybody can show up and be a part and claim that they're there. Um, but the way it has worked in my experience mm -hmm. is that um, people who seem to know what they're doing seem to have people who want to help them. Okay? okay. Those that are bossy or you will do this, it, it doesn't work that way. And so if you're going to nurture and if you're going to help and, and people have that experience, automatically there's a relationship that builds. And it's those relationships that our organization is kind of built on. Is it unspoken that these women just naturally become the leaders? Yeah, um, for the most part. Okay. But um, oftentimes, you know, it's not a vote. Right. It's not um, such. But it, our history has been that there are individuals who go out and have served, mm -hmm. okay, um, helped others, and because of that, they want to help, and they kind of continue to do that, and they kind of build support. It's not a, a contest or anything like that, but right. it's just a natural process. Um, I understand, if unless I'm mistaken, that a lot of the followers or believers, um, they're students we call students. ourselves. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> a lot of the students happen to be vegans. Is that is that true or is that um, It's a, a fascinating uh, question. Um, all vegetarian. Oh, okay. okay. And part of that is that um, when you recognize that your mind is um, what you are trying to cultivate, cultivate or uh -huh. purify um, and make so that it's powerful, the things that you take in through your eyes and your ears and your mouth mm -hmm. affect that. And so if you start to watch people chopping each other's heads off or things, that's not very peaceful and so that's going to affect you. If sure. you start listening to things that are upsetting, that's not very peaceful and that will affect you. Uh -huh. So trying to um, edit what comes into yourself yeah. and your mouth is another one. Um, it's very hard to be stable and peaceful and clear when you're drunk or right. drinking alcohol. Okay. And if you recognize uh, diet plays a big part, mm -hmm. then the um, the aspect of what are you doing and what is the food and what is the energy and how much adrenaline might be in certain things and what sort of chemicals, that can affect a subtle level of your stability. 
Now that's vegetarian. Vegan would be without dairy. Right. And so we don't have a um, an official position, mm -hmm. but many are saying that that would be uh, even more so. So this is a, this is still developing. What what your beliefs are? What it what it stands for? Or is it set in stone? Um, well, it's it's quite fascinating uh, to me because I grew up in the United States, right. but it's um, worldwide. There's um, centers for the Brahma Kumaris in about 120 countries or so, oh. and <laughs> the there's a similar themes, but how it's presented and how it's understood differs. Mm -hmm. So what we would share and talk about here in Great Neck is different than what they do in India or in Africa or in Russia. Um, and there are some countries, it's quite fascinating, that having a conversation like this would be against the law. Really? Yeah. I mean, we're talking about things, um, there's more than a few of us, and so mm -hmm. it's a big world, and so different f facets and different ways um, I find just amazing. Yeah, it's incredible that it can take so many forms. But I understand there are some, op there's opposition to this, that there has been violence? Um, well, one of the things that you find is, uh, yes, I would agree. Um, at the beginning mostly, not now that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. um, but when you start to change how you look at things, yeah. and you can probably see this with the friends that you've already experienced, when you start to move in a direction, oh, I'd rather go to the, the football game than the dog show, or I'd rather do this mm -hmm. or do this, then all of a sudden you're forcing people around you to respond in a different way. Mm -hmm. When you all do the same things the same way, then there's no change and there's no growth. But when you start to say, I want to do this, then all of a sudden you're saying to your friends, um, kind of uh, unknowingly, um, mm -hmm. do you want to join me or not? Oh. And that puts a lot of pressure on them. And you've gone through this you know, from grade school to high school. And Absolutely. You're going to pick a college and somebody's going to go there and all of a sudden, mm -hmm. You know, Last, yeah. th that change will affect their life also. Right. And some people don't like being changed. Mm -hmm. And so when um, family members want to be more peaceful or change their diet, and others don't want them to do that because that's a threat to what they wanted and how they had it, uh, conflicts can come up. So it's, a, it's a definitely a brave thing to believe <laughs> in something. Um, so you said it started in undivided India. Yeah. How did it make its way to the United States? Um, kind of word of mouth and people know and it's a, a very organic process mm -hmm. um, but it was in India in the, the 30s and in the 50s oh. they started to move 1950s out into different places because the individuals who were in India mm -hmm. uh, had moved out and said why don't you come and you know visit and so it was kind of on a personal connection and oh. so there were some individuals in New York and California um, Texas who were some of the uh, beginning ones in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, they knew people and those people invited others to come because they had taken benefit and they wanted to share that too. And then that's when posts were established and houses yeah. were made. We have we call them centers, centers. meditation centers, okay. correct. That's what I think now is a good time to um, open up the floor. We have some guests who would like to ask some Great. questions. Great, wonderful. So we can bring those guys up. Okay guys. Hi, my name is Adnan. I was just wondering, um, the building looks like a church. Uh, what would someone find inside? Okay, um, it looks like a church because it was built as a church. <laughs> um, if you know the history of uh, Great Neck, it was the Christian Scientist Church. Um, and I've seen pictures in it. One time it was kind of by itself on a hill. Um, that time is long past. Now it's a four-lane road and such. Um, but it would be... Um, churchy like but personally um, the architecture is wonderful it's kind of a new england sparse so it's not a religious feel to it but it's kind of a peaceful we're not into austerities we don't like to uh, punish ourselves but we do like to uh, <laughs> kind of sit comfortably and so the um, very nice original wood pews uh, were padded okay <laughs> and so there's a little padding and in the hall, we've got a focal point, a point of light. And we see that as a place where we can rest our eyes or we can focus or we can actually see that as our self. Um, light, energy, consciousness, and allow ourselves to then be um, free to engage our mind in the choice of thoughts that we would like. Um, you're quite welcome to visit any time. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tim. I was wondering, who can come to your classes and programs? Can children participate? 
Um, everybody's welcome, but we've run into um, a situation in our history, we've been there about 22 years now at Harmony House, um, where we like to have those who are 18 and younger, under than 18, um, have their parents know. Okay, parents are kind of curious about their children, and that we, we, we respect that. So we don't want people to come um, without their awareness. But uh, adults, and 18, I guess, is the legal age, uh, we wouldn't ask for a note from your, your parents. But we found that that's the best way for us to do it. Um, and if there would be a group that would come, we have uh, youth that come together um, infrequently. There's not a lot of uh, classes and children that come. They're typically busy in the world as opposed to trying to figure out how to relax in the world. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, everybody is, is very welcome in that sense. Thank you. Uh, and one more question. Do you charge for your programs? Actually, we don't. Um, the meditation, the hall, um, we would charge for the materials. So if you wanted a CD or a book, um, that we would have to charge that. We have to pay uh, tax on that also. Um, but everything is um, without charge. Um, you're welcome to make a donation. Um, we think that that's a, a, a nice opportunity for you to kind of follow your money because where your money goes, your intellect goes, and so you kind of have that uh, opportunity. But we don't uh, discriminate on anybody's uh, financial standing. Right, thank Thanks you. for the question. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, okay, so I guess going on that, how does Brahma Kumari um, support our community, I guess specifically yeah. here in Great Neck? Okay, um, specifically in Great Neck, we see that um, the world is a place and the circumstances are often stressful. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot going on and people often would like to find a place to step out of that. Um, many people like to learn about how they work, how they think, and what the consequences of that are. And so we would offer instructions for that. Um, we do some outreach activities, um, teach positive thinking, art to relax, anger management, mm -hmm. um, try to impart skills for individuals so that they can lead their lives, whatever they might be, in the way that they would want to. Um, we're also involved in a, a variety of other activities, um, kind of taking a, a spiritual perspective on environment, for example. Um, the environment's important to, to many of us. <laughs> and ours is not to clean it up, but to have the consciousness that you are a part of the world. And so if you respect that and treat that well, then that would be a, a good way to do that. And in order to respect it and treat it well, you need to have the ability to hold on to those thoughts and live with that. And so that kind of ties into the meditation. Right. So, um, I read one where I heard that um, the easiest way to um, uh, make the environment better is not to start the pollution because once you put it into the system, it goes everywhere. Yeah, and so that's, that's pretty. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, do you? Do you? I mean, yeah, that's exactly it. Do you um, discriminate? Not discriminate. I guess. Do you accept all faiths? Anyone of any faith? Yeah. If um, we, we would request that they would want to be more peaceful and loving and joyful. Uh, that's kind of a pretty low barrier. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but it, it's there and sit and kind of relax and we can kind of offer the, the ways to engage yourself so that you can find more of those qualities. Um, but we find that that's uh, universal. So whether it's um, Christian or Jewish or Muslim or uh, without any kind of a faith, um, those seem to be the qualities and we would see those as non-physical mm -hmm. or spiritual, metaphysical. And so we see everybody having the right to those things. It's beautiful. <laughs> I guess to wrap it up, I would like to ask you if you had a message that you wanted to get out to the Great Neck community from um, the okay. Harmony House. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, just a, a welcome invitation. We think that um, kind of leading a life with that awareness of the spiritual element of ourselves. We get so caught up oftentimes in uh, accumulating or accomplishments or what my future is that oftentimes our lives are based on uh, fear and worry. And so to be able to offer a place and a skill, discipline, um, where you might be able to still do the same things, um, but more consciously and with the qualities that you want, uh, that invitation in the various programs that we offer is uh, very much offered to the Great Neck residents. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. We love having been, you here. It was it's been so my much pleasure. Fun. My it pleasure. Was very interesting. Thank you. And from all of us here at Teen TV, I'm Isabella Malfi. Thank you for watching.
Warm greetings from Global Harmony House, a place where you can learn to reconnect to your inner peace and learn Raja Yoga Meditation. Located on Middle Neck Road in Great Neck, we offer classes, discussion, and workshops in positive thinking, meditation, conversations for women, and various insightful presentations. Our main hall is open for quiet contemplation and festive events with the classroom used for smaller activities and conversations. The bookshop with books, music, and posters can support your meditation practice. We hope to see you soon at Global Harmony House where all programs and classes are without a fee. Have a peaceful day. Om Shanti.